So here I have my pattern pieces for the jacket. There are some pieces that I have not traced again because I'm gonna use them as is. One of them, for instance, is the pocket lining. And then we already have one that I traced. This is the, the top flap and we're going to change that shape. So I'm putting it right here for now. Same goes for the weld. And I just noticed I've forgotten in my sketch to include the welds, but we're going to use this as well. Then we have the under collar, which is going to be changed. Uh, this is top lining for the chest pocket, stays as is. Same for the pocket facing, bottom lining. The collar stand stays as is. Uh, chest pocket, bottom lining stays as is. This is chest pocket facing. And then we have the front facing, which I may have to modify. I'm not sure yet. So this is kind of a maybe situation. And then we have also the back neck facing stays as is. And I'm thinking about because this is going to be a situation where and I did last night. I did draw this and pardon my uh, poor skills in painting. So technically this will go here, but since this is all organza and then you have the applique added on top, I might do the back facing regardless and have it shine through in the black. I think that might look interesting. I'm not quite sure yet. So we keep it in, we keep it as is. And then we have the bottom sleeve, which is going to stay as is. All right. And now for the pieces that do not stay as is, apart from the three that I've already shown. So here is the front piece. Important for the rustling. This is pattern paper. It rustles. This is the back piece. Then we have the side front piece, the top sleeve, and the collar. So these are all going to get treatments and are going to be changed. I'm going to show you how right now. Okay, let's start off starting with the collar. What I'm going to do is I'm only going to cut away for now the seam allowance here and I'm going to add that on back later once I have modified the pattern so that we can have the pattern piece including seam allowance. So you have to imagine the color is going to be like this and what I would like to do is add this as a little swirl going outside and then coming back in. So what we're doing, I'm going to scrap paper. See this line that would then go without it. Okay. And then and the seam allowance back on, which is not 1.5, but it's one centimeter. 
And now comes the thinking part here because we are only adding one centimeter. For the undercolor, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to copy this again because, yeah, and you see, so the difference between the upper and the undercolor is that you have everything a little bit, okay, I need to put it here, here's where it's at, all right. Um, everything's a little smaller, right? So I'm going to mimic that for the rest of the undercolor as well. So making the same shape, but make it a little bit smaller. But for now, I'm tracing it so that it is the same size. And I hope it makes sense. We'll see about it. Again, cutting away the seam allowance to add it back on after I'm done with the drawing. Just fumble around here with something that doesn't work. This looks better. Trying to be a little bit frugal here, but yeah. see how this goes. This is on top of each other, and I'm drawing the original size now. Okay, now we're going back actually. The undercolor, and if you see, if you see on top of this, you will see that also here in the curve it's a little smaller, right? So, this is then going to line up for the actual solid part. Next up. Pocket flap. Again, we're cutting away the seam allowance. 
Okay, so my thinking is I'm gonna leave this curve as is, but I'm gonna go inside here. So at right where that notch is, I'm going to draw in. And then I'm going to continue the curve and go extremely out. And add Something like this. I have to try it out as I'm moving through this here. Okay, and then as we did before, we're going to add the one centimeter seam allowance. All right, next part is the sleeve. The sleeve is a two-piece sleeve, but we're going to turn it into a three-piece. And for that, as we are going, moving with the grain line, I have drawn this line all the way down, and this is where I'm going to cut it apart. And we are going to create the same kind of swirls that we created on the skirt. So let's try and do that. First off, and I'm trying to use the same measurements, but everything's meeting here. So now, if you look at this, we're going up seven centimeters and back down. Let's go down to this point. This one. And a red marker again, so you can see. part 
far as I can see, this is where it goes downhill from here on out. I want to be above the elbow. I think I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to go fairly high up here, even into that interfacing part so that I really have the M fairly high up. Let's see. One and a half down. And another one and a half down. And if I use this as my guide, I'm right here. Taking it up seven centimeters. Make it 3.5. Okay. And this was What did I say? Pull this line up. Like six centimeters. So six from here up. After doodling a bit I think we have the second curve this is fairly high up I think it's higher up than I intended but we're gonna leave it at that okay and again we have now the situation where we need to actually, yeah, we, we need to actually label this. So, this for sleeve, and then left and right, facing up. And then we go over. Scotland, it's now two, it's now three. Four, it's now five. It's five, one, it's now two. And guess what? We're cutting this all apart and we're going to add seam allowance. Right, and after taking a little break, we are now back to hopefully finish off the pattern manipulation. I got so excited in the meantime that I already put this away, but here is the evidence all with the seam allowance. And now we're moving on. What I also did for the front was I Instead of tracing this thing again, I've just, so I'm utilizing the grain line as the center front because that is what it is, according to the pattern, right here. And then I added one centimeter for the seam allowance and I folded that back. And this way, this is how we can Simply cut that out. Now, 
back panel. We have two separating darts that are like princess seams, but they don't go all the way through. And at first I was thinking to extend this all the way down. You have the two panels, the two darts separating into panels. And I wanted to make this a full princess seam, but I've changed my mind because I was taking the side front panel. And to understand this, I'm going to show you. I already made a dotted line here. And here is another line, which will be important. But when I hold this and I move this down, you will see that this kind of ends, it actually ends before, before the dart ends here. So what I'm going to do instead of here, I should actually go here. very rough from, from a pattern perspective. Okay, anyway, so this is what that's like. Yes, so my idea is that this panel is going to just end here and then you should have even going to be higher and from here it should be it should actually be here so this is all going to be black and this is going to be the organza part and then we're going to cut here and so that these panels are roughly ending or they are actually ending in the same spot right it just moves on from here and this portion here is also going to be black. So there is going to be a little break here. And then this is going to be the organza panel, but it's going to stop at the same height. So if you look at the sketch, I actually drew it like that. So this is the middle panel. And then you see here the little side. That's what this is supposed to be, this little side back. This is going to be completely black and then you have the organza. So I'm going to cut this apart at this line and then I'm going to show you what else I'm going to do with this. new back pattern back side back and then the bottom so this is going to be black and then this right and this one is going to be organza only now for the last piece the front all right so the way that the front is constructed is it's similar to the back where you have this dart that ends here and they opened up the pieces so that you have the opening here to insert the pocket. So that's why I already have this angle and all I did was just roughly continuing that line and even dipping down a little bit. I wanted it again to have this slight curve into an M. But here it's very very light and slight it's like you can hardly see it and then i measured 10.5 upwards on both ends and connected that as well and that's all there is to it it's going to be a very small panel here and then you have the various lines of the vinyl that are going to be applied on the organza so this is going to be our midriff and then you have the side front and they've marked the same here 
where the pocket is inserted but they also have a dart here that's why it looks so crooked and all I did was I held these notches against each other again it's a little bit playing with the notches here Should be correct. We're cutting this apart, adding seam allowance. Wow. And we're back. I have just finished the skirt and now we are going to get on with the jacket. What I'm trying to do tonight is I wanted to cut everything and everything means kind of I'm trying to cut everything that is cotton sateen, everything that is cotton sateen and the latex spandex and then also the organza for the back pieces. What I'm not going to cut tonight is the lining because I still need to work on the bodice pieces, the fronts, cutting it so that you don't have the midriff covered. Oh, I could rectify that even later on. We'll see. I'm, I'm not sure right now. But also, I need to cut the back applique and the appliques on the midriffs tomorrow. I first need to draft those. I haven't drafted anything of the skeletal structure yet. And then we are going to start on those actually once I've drafted them. But I am going to experiment a little bit because I'm not quite sure how this is going to work with the silk organza and the spandex put on top of it. I did buy some embroidery thread because what's happening is I'm going to actually zigzag stitch the applique onto the organza and silk organza is not the most stable fabric to begin with. And that is why we're going to have to test it and see how we get along. But that is for tomorrow. Tonight it's just cutting and kind of structuring everything. I did make the little piles of what do I need to cut from what. That is done. And now we are getting into it. I'm going to try and find a movie to watch on Prime. And you are going to be on time lapse. So enjoy. Okay, it is the next day. I have, as you have seen, successfully cut out most of the pieces for the jacket. And what you're seeing right now here is the midriff. I've just sewn together the two midriff pieces. And what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to decide how to place pieces of this 
onto the midriff. So I, I did doodle a little bit on the pattern and then I copied it onto pattern pieces, which I've now laid out. I think I like how this looks. We're just going to try it out. I got both midriffs sewn together. And up here you can see the two back panel pieces, which are going to follow up next. So we're going a bit through a creative process here. I will cut these from the spadnecks. And I wanted to actually interface them just to take a little bit of the stretch out. And I hope that works. And then we're going to try and apply it, but I'm going to try it on a scrap piece first because safety first. We'll see how it goes. Okay, one midriff is done, as you can see here. I mean, you cannot really see it because the mannequin is black too, but this is actually the organza. And I've stitched down the four pieces. It's still a little bit of, I'm figuring out how to do this best. I think I need to stitch here again because this I didn't hit, but I've now found the right width and the right stitch length. And yeah, this is the first one, and now we're going to do the other one. Okay, after I finished the two midriffs last night, I went ahead and started on the back piece. You may have seen that from the time lapse. So what I did do, I stitched together the two back pieces. So then the dart on the sides and then stitched them both together. And what I did after that was I made a tracing of that assembled piece because if you would look at the so this is the very original back piece before i did the alternations but you can see you have the two darts in here so this has become a side piece in the end this one remained and this one i stitched closed and then i put them both together in the center back seam but it means it would be a lot bigger if I had made a copy just of the back piece. And so I decided to sew the back piece together, or the rustling, um, sew the two back pieces together and then make a tracing out of that. Because the applique obviously should not be getting into seam allowances or, yeah, be too big that you don't consider the room that you have actually enclosed with the dart or the center back seam. So that is what I did. And this is the tracing of that. And then I started kind of doodling the spinal shape into the, onto the back piece. The only thing I did, I roughly marked where I wanted the, well, I now have the back piece so that it is right below the arm side. Uh, almost. Just, I think it's roughly correct. I, I looked at the jacket and it was fairly low as well. I didn't want to make it too high because you have three 
spinal shapes going up. And then also I wanted to be away enough from the top edge. So if you consider one centimeter seam allowance, I went down a total of five centimeters or two inches before I started the shape. And then I was roughly marking that I wanted this to end at the waistline. So I did that. I kind of think the organza part is going to be too long in total on the jacket, but I'm going to leave it as is. It's fine. But I, at, at least I wanted the spinal shape to end at the waist, roughly at the waist. So if, you, if you see, here's the waistline and I went a little bit lower. And then it was just a matter of looking at the picture and then trying to recreate that. Um, the good part or bad part, I don't know how you want to see it. This is only nine pieces in total because this middle piece is just one piece that is all together. So that is going to be very complicated to stitch. We're going to do it anyway. We're going to make it. And then you have four singular pieces on each side and I numbered them left to right again so I know how to put them in the end on the jacket and that is yeah what we are going to do now I'm going to cut this out and then cut it out of the latex I have a couple of spare pieces too that I can utilize for instance for this these two small pieces and then cut the big piece Cutting everything also from interfacing because that works really well, lining it with interfacing. And also I have um, this sticky tape that you can iron that is sticky on both sides when you iron it. Um, and I'm using that just to put the pieces on the organza in place so that it doesn't shift too much while I stitch them on because I can't really use pins. I'm using pins, but very carefully, only where, well, I did it for the midrib, only where there were parts that will be covered by seam allowance. But on this back piece, you are not going to have any parts that are gonna be covered by seam allowance, so I can't use any pins here. So I will use this tape and make the best of it. Wish me luck. Welcome back. It's been five to ten minutes since I came on here. In reality, it's three weeks since I came on here. I was visiting home, so I took a little trip, didn't sew anything in the meantime, and now I'm back trying to continue the Persephone jacket, which is going to be challenging for me because being out of this for three weeks i kind of lost i lost my thread a little no pun intended on this jacket but i remember that i prepared the back piece and i can show you real quickly so i did cut out all of the red pieces for the spinal pattern and i've uh, ironed them onto the back piece uh, with like this I think this is like this magic hem tape which is like sticky on both sides so you can actually iron yeah iron this on onto the back piece and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zigzag around all of the pieces which is going to be a lot of work but then this applique is on the back piece, and then I think we can start assembling the jacket, which should be exciting. I also have the sleeves to do in the end, which are going to have the same concept as the skirt head with the side pieces. So without further ado, let's try to get this finished, and then we are going to move into assembling the full jacket. Putting you on time lapse. Enjoy. So here I am stitching the applique onto the back piece, the organza back piece. And of course, in time lapse, it all looks very easy and quick, but it was not the lengthiest process, but it was a little bit time consuming. 
but I must say the magic hand tape really helped me hold it in place. Hello! So, I am back. It took a little bit. This is not a couple of days later, it's actually a few weeks later. I was very busy in the meantime and it got to the point where I was kind of... I wasn't fed up with the jacket, but I just didn't want to continue on it. I felt kind of kind of blah about it. So what I did was I, I've sewn a couple of other things and actually I wanted to start sewing something different today. And then I was like, no, I hate having U of O's like unfinished objects in my sewing space. I hate that. And I've now decided that I want to finish the jacket and make this a complete outfit. It is going to be finished way too late for everything, way too late, obviously, for Halloween. Halloween is like one month ago now. It's going to be too late even for, because on Tuesday I wanted to actually wear this for an event, but I'm not going to make it for, for Tuesday. Right now it's Saturday night. I could, but I won't. What I did was I've also ordered a zipper for the jacket. I think I need a longer one, though. I've ordered one kind of not measuring, not bothering, and now I'm kind of thinking, like, I think I need a longer zipper. So probably I'm going to order a second one, which is okay. A black zipper you can always use. And I will just assemble the jacket tonight because I at least want the chaos of all of these pieces out of my way because every time I'm trying to cut something new something different I have to shift the pieces around and it just bugs me I just want this thing together I want some progress and that's what we're gonna do tonight and I'm gonna watch a movie on the side so I have entertainment I'm gonna put you on time lapse and then we'll see how this turns out so enjoy and here is where it gets interesting after I cleansed my machine. I started off with the two front pieces. I started preparing those to put them together with the midriff pieces that I had prepared beforehand. So I wanted a little bit more interest. I wanted to see something interesting and see how this works out. And yes, just trying to keep me motivated as well on this process. Then I was putting together the back piece. You can you can just barely see the back piece there for a second. And then I also prepared the pockets because the next day I continued on putting the pockets in for the front pieces. And you can also see that the midriff pieces are inserted and then you insert the pocket pieces, the, the flap, uh, which stays like an open flap so it's not a flap that goes over the pocket opening but it is part of the opening if that makes sense for the Solange blazer and I stuck with that uh, method of putting it together of course I just changed the flap in its shape well hello it's been a minute to be more precise it's been more than a minute in fact I have not filmed anything in regards to the Persephone for months. We had Christmas come and go, we had New Year's come and go, and we had my birthday come and go, and this thing still is not finished. You've seen my Make 9 for the new year, and I already mentioned that the Make 9 is Make 9 and a half because this thing needs to be finished. And I have decided this is the first thing I'm going to finish because it got to the point where even almost lost my sojo where I didn't want to do anything. I did a couple of things in between just to keep my sanity because this thing, it's not terrible in making it. It is just so tedious because of all of the intricate work that comes into it, like the panel work and the color blocking. I also did not keep my promise on showing you how the sleeves go together in terms of the color blocking. I did everything off camera. 
On a brighter note though, the jacket is assembled. All I need to do is sew the lining together and then sew the lining into the jacket. And I'm hoping I get this done today so that throughout the week, I will just do the hand sewing. But the interesting part, let me just show you what it looks like. Here she is, the Persephone. I did already shorten the jacket by a good two and a half inches because the Solange blazer is way too long. And you can also see like from the sleeves, these need to be shortened. So I roll this back so that I'm roughly ending up like this. But this is her in all her glory. This is the back. I'm wearing a nude bra under this at the moment. But yeah, I love the color. Uh, actually, this looks very much like devil horns, but I actually like this. It is, that is kind of what's saving it for me, despite all the tedious work, is that actually it looks really cool when you look at it, when it's done. But getting to the point, I had to do a lot of rework. I reworked the zipper too. Because then I figured out, oh, I had front facings. This is how far it got with me. I let this lay around for so long, I forgot what pieces I had on the jacket because they went all over the place. I was working on other projects and I came back to this and I forgot I had front facings in this. And I started to sew in the zipper and I was like, oh, great, the zipper is in. And then I realized, oh, no, you have to actually <laughs> sandwich it with the facing and then stitch it down. So the top stitching is going to come. If I show you closely right now, you can see it's still see the old stitching. I'm going to add top stitching on that. So this is going to disappear. Like from a standpoint that it would look wrong. Uh, these are the pockets, which are also really cool. I like these a lot. I find this a really cool outfit. It's just, it's been a lot. It's been a real lot. Also, since I've waited now for three months, I got something to show you because I got the bag for the outfit. Here it is. This is the Dracula, uh, what is it? Devil helmet or yeah, it's, it's from La Femme en Noir. It's a limited edition, and when I saw this, I was like, this is going to be perfect for the outfit. Mind you, this is totally, it's a playing around bag. It's not very practical. I already tried to put stuff in there, and it's like, you can't even really get your hand in there. This is totally for fun, but it looks quite epic with this outfit, I think. Yes, this is where we are. We're going to finish this off and then I can move on to other projects because I have other projects that I'm going to show you also when the time comes around. First things first, this needs to be done. Let's go. Getting ready for the final countdown, getting the Persephone finished and ready to go. I have started with the sleeves because I was intending to finish the sleeve hems first via machine so that's why you see me put together the sleeves here and then I started taking apart the various pieces of the lining I was very careful not to mix anything up that's why you see me take it off taking off the paper pattern pieces just bit by bit so I don't mix anything up because at this point I just wanted to get this finished right and I have put everything together roughly and then in the evening i started to hem the sleeve hems as you can see here pulling the lining in because the finish is a half machine made and half hand finished but you will see this when i get to the next part this is me just finishing off the front facing and the front end with the zipper and doing that whole front and collar finish with the lining. Right, 
this all looks a little bit chaotic, but the good news is from a machine sewing perspective, I would only have to sew the hem down here at the jacket and then essentially we're done except for the machine. Um, no, not the machine, the hand stitching, which is why you see me that I've pinned everything now in place because I had to cut out the lining for this part. And you can see this is kind of loose. I'm going to finish this off as well, putting this in. And I've sewn half of the sleeve and the lining together, as you can see here. And the other hand half is going to be hand stitched because you have the organza bag, which you probably cannot really see. But it is right here, the, the arm side. So, yeah, but I'm breaking tonight on this. I wanted to get further, but I am tired. And so we'll continue tomorrow. I am happy, though. This looks like it's going to the finish line. Hey, oh. So, the Persephone is officially finished. Here she is, the jacket. It, uh, I can't even, I can't even tell you how long this took. Um, we're in the middle of February right now. This was supposed to be finished in October, just to give you a rough idea. But I did sew other things in the meantime. Now we have also the lining. You see a little peek here. We got lining on the sleeves. So this is kind of partially lined because of the organza pieces, like the full back and the midriffs. So I had to hand stitch everything in place and kind of kind of improvised. I can't really give you instructions on this because this is not professional enough to do so. Regardless, she is finished, and you will see right now the Persephone in all its glory on me. So, enjoy. Persephone is finished. Now, I'm shooting this way, way, way in the future from when I actually finished the piece. As you may see, there is no sewing machine here. The reason is it's packed away, same as my microphone, which is why the sound might be very terrible and I apologize for that. But regardless, I wanted to film this before my move, which is happening from here in one week. And it's all a little crazy at the moment. But let me talk about this thing. I actually wore this out last week and I really enjoyed wearing it out. I feel like this is the perfect villain outfit. Uh, it has all of the elements, the, the giant collar, and the statement pockets, which you can see, I have to get up. There they are. Yes, and the midriff piece, which I love. I think this all came together really, really nicely. And also with the skirt, it's uh, 
it's a super cool outfit and I I like it a lot. I do believe this was so far my most challenging make. I have procrastinated a lot on this one so far that I was close to even giving up on it and there was no particular reason for it. It was just I, I hesitated for whatever reason to continue on this piece because I wanted it finished last year in October and once I knew I could not hit that deadline I was kind of over it again don't know why because it's stupid it's it's a gorgeous piece and I'm happy that I finally finished the, the piece but I'm also glad I made the pieces I made in between just to distract myself a little from the sheer complexity of this one. I wanted to film more. I did want to, and I promised to film the process of putting the sleeves together step by step. And then I thought, you know what, for the 20 people who may watch this, I don't think anyone is really interested in it. If you are interested in something like this, let me know. Then for the next piece, I can sure show you a little bit more about this type of color blocking work but for the purpose of getting this as a video series out i thought okay i can also skip on that and it was a very good process to just sew without filming everything and just seeing the progression of this make but yes this is number technically number five from the make nine from last year because i made this sort of the halloween outfit and then it didn't come together until halloween so like i said in in my instagram post i did make four and a half <laughs> of my make nine last year and we're already in end of April and I haven't even started on the new Make 9. But this is going to start very soon. In May, there will be at least one of the Make 9 coming up. Maybe I can wing out two. We'll see how it goes. But all of that, you will have to wait and see until the next video. And on that note, thank you so much for watching. If you took the time to watch till the very end. If you like this content, make sure to give it a thumbs up because that helps me out a lot and motivates me also to create more like this. And if you want to know how this journey of my sewing adventures continue, you can follow me either on Instagram, cinema.sewist, or, and, or you could subscribe to this channel. And yeah, I would say that's a wrap. This is the Persephone. I'm going back into my matrix world of packing and moving and I will see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Bye bye.